Hello everyone. Welcome to my new video. This is Nilanjana Sarkar, your English teacher. And today this video is for all those students, those who are facing difficulty in uh, solving a reading comprehension. Many students, uh, they have requested me to guide them how to solve a reading comprehension. And my video, this particular video is specifically meant for all those students. I want to help all the students out there. And uh, but before, before I go ahead, let me tell you, as it is customary, all of you know, please do subscribe to my channel uh, because I want to reach um, uh, you know, to all the subscribers. I, I just started my YouTube channel a few months back. So I need all your help and support so that I can reach out to the millions of students so that they can, uh, you know, be benefited from the knowledge that I am sharing. Okay. And do not forget to like my video and please share it with your friends and you know, your neighbors, your acquaintances, anybody. Okay. Now let's uh, come back to our topic, how to solve a reading comprehension, how to solve a reading passage. Uh, before I go ahead, uh, let me tell you that uh, reading passage is something which is mandatory in any kind of uh, competitive exams, proficiency based exams, your academic exams, board exams. It's a very, very important and compulsory question because it tests your reading skills. Therefore, you need to have a good hold and you know good practice of solving a reading comprehension passage. Now uh, what are the challenges uh, students face when they solve a reading comprehension passage? The first major challenge is many students take a lot of disinterest when it comes to a reading passage. They don't like to read and most of the time the theme, the theme of the reading passage is something uh, which does not uh, at all uh, seem attractive uh, to them. Therefore, they do it with a lot of boredom and they take a lot of disinterest in solving this. The next challenge is uh, most of the time they do not understand, you know, the words, the meanings, many meanings are not clear and therefore they do not uh, have an inclination towards solving the reading passage. So my video is uh, will give you some simple tips today simple strategies and tips that how can we overcome these small challenges which many students face okay now before i move ahead let me tell you that the first thing that you need to remember when you're solving a reading passage is check the timing now, most of the time you may get two passages. Okay, if you are a CBSC student, you will get two reading passages. If you are an ICSC student, you will get one reading passage. So how do you divide the time? Before you attempt, before you start doing, uh, you know, solving the passage, have a reading plan. A reading plan means how much time you will devote for this reading passage. So if you have two passages, According to me, you should not be giving more than 10 minutes for each passage. So total 20 minutes uh, should be uh, devoted for solving the reading section. Okay. And if you are uh, having only one reading passage in the 10th or you know, 11th, 12th level, you should give 25 minutes, not more than that. But whatever time you give, you devote yourself, you need to keep a check for that. Time to time, please uh, go and refer to the, uh, the watch, the times. Have a timer with you. That's more important. If you have a timer with you, you will be able to understand how much time you are devoting and you should not miss out the other sections of the paper. You should have a proper plan for that. And always remember that at the end, you should keep five minutes for reviewing your answers. So that is also equally important. Okay, now that is the first thing which I said that have a check on the timing. The next thing that you have to remember is what is the main objective of a reading passage? The main objective is that you have read it and you have understood the main idea and you can summarize the entire passage. I mean that should be the main objective. That is the reason the passage is given to you. 
the main objective is the student should be able to read understand and summarize get the main idea of the passage so how do you go about the first thing yes you have to read a reading passage means you have to read so please do a proper reading for the first time and over here my dear students i would like to tell you that there are many videos which i have seen in youtube which where they are stating that do not read the passage straight away go to the questions please please do not fall prey to such misconceptions a reading passage means you have to read without reading that's a very basic thing so do not fall prey to all such misconceptions that no i'm not going to read i'm straight away go to the questions my dear students please choose your mentors very carefully so do not have any kind of misconception that no we don't have to read so first time you will read okay you will do a thorough reading now the second thing what you will do is now you will go to the questions you will go to the questions and you will check the questions as you check the questions after you are done with that after you have read all the questions now you will come back to the passage once again and this time you will do a second reading but this second reading is again not a general reading like the first time this second reading should be a selective reading or a skimmed reading now what is selective reading and skimmed reading yes it means that the questions that you have read and the passage that you are reading for the second time you should try to draw a connection that for this question i need to refer to this part so i'm going to skim just that part and correlate okay i'm not going to get into everything about the passage i'm going to do a skimmed reading a skimmed reading means only whatever is required for the questions you will pick only that part and you have to eliminate the other things okay so this is known as a skimmed reading now when we come to the questions in a reading passage you can have questions which can be based on mcq which are multiple choice questions or you can have questions in the form of question answer format if it is a multiple choice question mcq then you just have to tick the correct option there is uh, no uh, point of writing answers but if it is a question answer format then it has to be written in a proper way for those students those who need to solve the reading comprehension through the form of question and answers my advice to all of you would be always remember to restate the question in your answer restate the question means uh, let's take a random example uh, if i give you a question like why does the author uh, talk about procrastination if that is the question now you have to immediately uh, try to locate this answer you have to go back to the passage where the author talks about procrastination so will you simply pick up that part and write not really so how you going to start your answer the author talks about procrastination because and then you will refer to that passage my dear students restating the question in your answer will help you to justify the answer and also at the same time the examiner will get a clarity that why you have referred to this answer or why have you picked up this answer okay next we move on to what if you get a vocabulary based question now this is where most of the students absolutely they go nuts they get very confused when it comes to a vocabulary based questions because most of the time they do not know the meaning now how do you tackle that yes it must be really challenging my advice to all of you would be if you really do not know the meaning of a word like a meaning can be asked in the form of give the antonym of this word which is opposite give the synonym of this this word means which is a similar meaning word how do you tackle that for that my dear students try to read the sentence in which this uh, you know word appears in the passage this is known as contextual meaning if you understand the sentence but if you do not know the meaning of that particular word in that sentence at least try to gather the meaning by understanding that line the line above that the line below that and in this way try to get the meaning of the context i'm going to show you that what are the various kinds of questions which may be asked in your reading passage let's have a look 
Now the various kinds of questions that can be asked are, the first one is factual. Factual question means questions which are based on facts. These are the easiest questions that you get in your reading comprehension. They are very direct questions like when, how, who, which. These are very, they can just easily be picked up from the passage and can be written. So they are questions based on facts and they are known as the factual questions. The second kind of question is making inferences. Now making inferences means what? Inference means you have to draw a conclusion. I will give you one example. In the last sample paper, there was a question where based on the passage, you had, there were five quotes which were given. Quotes of various philosophers. Now these quotes were not there in the passage. So students were literally going mad thinking these quotes are not in the passage. How do I know where to hunt for them? But they were not there and it was not necessary to have those quotes in the passage. The idea was after you read the passage, which quote can you relate as the main idea? So that is the reason in the very beginning I said that the main idea of a reading passage is you should be able to grasp the main objective and the main, main idea behind it. So once you know the main idea, once you understand the passage, you can relate to this particular quote and that is what you have to do. So such questions are known as making inferences where you draw an inference after reading the passage, you conclude that this is the thing that I know about this passage. The next thing is sequencing. These questions are also very common. Sequencing means the order of events which takes place in the passage. Which event orders um, happens when? The order of the events as they occur in the passage. So accordingly, you need to know the sequence. So uh, let's take for example, you have four options given. You are given four options. Okay. So is it three, two, four, one? The paragraph, if you can have the numbering like that, or is it one, two, three, four? This is the order of events. Um, which happens in the passage, which occurs in the passage and you need to know that whether which is the correct sequence. So such questions are known as sequencing based, sequence based questions. The next one is, as I said, vocabulary based. Over here you can be asked to write the antonym or you can be asked to write the synonym. Antonym means opposite and synonym means similar meaning words. One more uh, question which can be asked is applying information. Now what is applying information? These are known as the personal response questions. What do you think about this particular problem? How would you tackle it? Do you think this is correct? Yes or no? Justify your answer. So these are like applying information to yourself. Such questions are known as personal response and they can also be given in a reading passage to check your understanding. Okay, so uh, as I said that, you know, these are the common kind of questions which are there in a reading passage. And if you practice, if you follow these tips and techniques, it will just be a cakewalk for you. At the end, I would like to tell you is... If you really want to do good in your reading passage, if you want to score full marks in your reading passage, you have to read a lot. And if you do not read, that is when you will face a problem. So please do a lot of reading. And reading doesn't just mean newspaper. You have to do a wide reading. Novels, short stories, blogs, articles, whatever comes across. Please have a taste of everything that comes across to you. Nowadays students actually they have lost the habit of reading which is very very uh, you know painful for a teacher. So as a teacher I would seriously recommend all of you to do a lot of reading and those students those who like to you know play with their mobiles and they love gadgets for them I would say if, even you can pick up a google article and read not necessarily you need to have a storybook of course reading a storybook will have long term effects. But you can even pick up a Google article on your phone and start reading. They are even interesting. So as I said students, that was all about my, this video, how to solve a reading passage. If you have any doubts, get back to me in my email address. I do take live coaching sessions. I help students. I mentor them. Please get back to me if you need any kind of help. 
and at the same time do share this video with your friends your relatives your neighbors so that i can reach out to more people and help them uh, that was all for this video see you soon with my next video bye bye